Welcome back to Mental Math. Here's a classic question in complex numbers. Does I cubed equal I? There's a very tempting proof that suggests it does. So let's investigate this claim together, uncover where the reasoning goes wrong, and find what the true answer actually is. So first, let's look at the argument that leads to the wrong conclusion. And I'll tell you, it's surprisingly convincing. The argument starts simple enough. We write i cubed as i times i times i. Now, here's the key move. We replace each i with its definition, the square root of negative 1. So we have three square roots of negative 1 all multiplied together, and this is where things go wrong. The next step combines all three radicals under a single square root. It takes all three negative ones and puts them under a single radical. Well, negative one times negative one times negative one just gives you negative one. So we're left with the square root of negative one, which is just i by definition. So it looks like we've proven that i cubed equals i. But something's not right here. Let's pause and take the algebraically rigorous path. This will show us what the answer really should be. So instead, we write i cubed as i squared times i. And the nice thing about this is that i squared has a very well-defined value. This is actually the defining property of i. It's the number whose square is negative 1. So we replace i squared with negative 1 which gives us negative i. So algebraically, i cubed is actually negative i, not i itself. There's our contradiction. Okay, so what went wrong? Well, the issue comes down to how we handle square roots. You know that rule where the square root of a times the square root of b equals the square root of a times b? That's only valid when both of those numbers are non-negative. When one or both are negative, the rule breaks down. And in our flawed proof, both a and b were negative one. So we applied a rule in exactly the situation where it doesn't work. Now, if you want to really see what's going on, there's a beautiful geometric way to think about powers of i. Their rotations in the complex plane. So here's the complex plane. The horizontal axis represents real numbers, and the vertical axis represents imaginary numbers. Let's start with the number 1, right here on the real axis. There it is. Brings us up here to the imaginary axis. That's i. And we end up at negative 1. So visually, you can see why i squared equals negative 1. And we land down here on the negative imaginary axis. This is negative i. The geometry makes it crystal clear. I cubed is definitely not I. It's negative I. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this exploration of complex numbers, consider liking this video and subscribing for more mathematical adventures.